Uh, my guest is uh, Dr. Noel Kalicharan. Dr. Kalicharan is a senior lecturer in computer science at the Department of Computing and Information Technology at the University of the West Indies. And um, he has a contrary view as to the World Health Organization's fanfare de um, uh, declaration of a public health emergency. It's some questions about Zika and whether it is all that we are hearing. Let me start by welcoming Dr. Kalicharan. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, sir. Yes, thank you, Renny. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and hello to your listeners. The pleasure is indeed ours. You have written many influential papers that spark debate and national community, which is a good thing. Good grades, but poor thinkers. I like that. You also spoke about optimizing our human potential. I like the area yeah, that you I said we. <laughs> yes, we have become a papered society, not an educated one. That is our way of making sure that the conversation is there. In February first, however, this year. With much fanfare, who declared a uh, public health emergency. The rationale given by the World Health Organization, however, does not stand up to your scrutiny. You are not convinced that there is, there was a need. Uh, there, you're not convinced that there was full disclosure or accuracy in the information to warrant a worldwide, worldwide declaration. Tell me yes. why. Tell our listeners why. Okay, well, first of all, the problem started with uh, their statistics. When I wrote the article, uh, and in fact I was writing a different article when the news broke about the figures from the Ministry of Health in Brazil, mm -hmm. where they said that um, initially they said there were over 4,000 cases, and I think your previous guest mentioned that and um, cases of microcephaly. Mm -hmm. or, well, at the time they said suspected cases of microcephaly. Yes. And then, just as I was writing an article with a different slant, I heard, I read that um, they were doing an intense analysis of the data, and up to the point of writing, they had examined 700-odd uh, cases. And of these, only 270 had been um, confirmed as having microcephaly. Mm -hmm. In other words, over 400, I believe it was 462, were rejected as not having microcephaly. So, in other words, um, the whole, uh, the amount that they were talking about was grossly exaggerated. Mm -hmm. So that's one mm -hmm. issue. And one might ask, well, why were these figures um, so grossly exaggerated? And my take on that is that, well, it was to create um, a bit of hysteria, a bit of panic, that this was a big problem that we had to deal with. Um, but to me, the more important thing was in the actual data that they gave us. They said out of the 270 cases, uh, Zika was present in only six of them. Mm. Mm -hmm. So to me, I mean, simple logic should tell you. If Zika was causing microcephaly, you would expect to find it in all or almost all the cases. Yes, a greater, a greater percentage, definitely. <coughs> yeah, as it mm -hmm. turns out, it was not present in 98% of the cases. Um, <coughs> in fact, I, I was thinking of um, an analogy that one can use um, to explain the same thing, because once you start talking virus and vaccines and so on, people get worried, they get confused. Mm -hmm. But let's suppose, let's take a... Let me make up a local example. Suppose 100 students in a school fall ill, okay, with basically the same symptoms. Let's, <clears throat> let's suppose they, um, you know, vomiting, diarrhea, or what have you, but 100 students fall ill. And someone suggests, well, maybe um, the cause was the cafeteria food, okay? So they interview the students, and when they interview them, only three of them said they ate food from the cafeteria. Now, as a man of logic, what would you <laughs> deduce from that? I'm asking you. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry there, doctor. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. I said um, the 100 students got ill. They, somebody um, speculated that it may have been caused by um, the cafeteria food. Mm -hmm. And so when they interviewed the students, only three of them said that they had actually eaten food. So we know, in fact, it is not the cafeteria food it's that's causing this. Indeed, so okay. That, to me, it's, it's as obvious as that. Yes, as I, that. I, I follow that. I just lost you oh, just for a, okay, a very yeah, important so. area there. But yes, I agree with you. It is not the cafeteria food, right. clearly. So, um, and then we also cannot conclude that the three who got sick got sick from the food either. 
It is just that they happen to have ate, ate the food. Yes, yes. Okay, now take that, compare that with, you know, with the Zika statistics. And what does it say? It says 270, you have, um, have microcephaly, confirmed cases. We are saying that, um, or we are postulating that Zika has caused this. And when you examine the 270 cases, only six has Zika present. What would you conclude from that? The same thing, yes. that mm-hmm. it does not cause it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So whereas, um, you know, we are hearing there is a link and so on, to me, this data conclusively proves uh, that there is no association. So we like to use these vague words like association, um, links, you know, that mean really nothing. And um, But to me, this proves that there is not a link. Yes, because when you look at the numbers, even you look at the numbers of cases that are born uh, in the United States per year, uh, is, 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 yes, and, right. and you in take the, the percentage States, coming believe, down with you know, it. Yes. From several sources I've looked at, they mm-hmm. said there are 25,000 cases of microcephaly every year yes. in the United States. Mm-hmm. And um, nobody, is, no, nobody mentioned Zika. Um, I think you posed the question earlier about this virus being discovered in 1947. Yes. And for General information, um, in 1947, the virus was patented by the Rockefeller Foundation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay? mm-hmm. Now, why would anybody patent anything <laughs> if not to profit from it? Which, which, which raises the point of one of the things that you proffer. You proffer that a couple of things could, uh, could be con- contributing to microcephaly, and that includes uh, the, um, uh, the tetanus, the diphtheria, uh, uh, the diphtheria, yeah, the right? And, and uh, also, also in reading that very important uh, piece of information you put out there, there is the discussion of genetically engineered mosquitoes may be contributors to this. Okay, now we are saying, and I am not absolutely convinced that this um, virus is being spread by the mosquito, the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Mm. Because uh, I was having a discussion with a couple of my friends. Um, they, well, they happen to be medical doctors as well. And they were also skeptical. Um, in other words, how do we know this thing was being spread? Who gave us that information <laughs> in the first place? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay? And not only that, a mosquito, um, I've read, I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure, but it doesn't travel very far. You know, a few hundred yards at most. Mm-hmm. So how come, you know, suddenly in Brazil, and notice the concentration is in, is in the northeast of Brazil, mm-hmm. and why not everywhere else? Why only there? Um, and I'll come back to that point in a minute in terms of trying to answer why there. And um, suddenly it pops up in other countries as well. And my question is, well, why... You know, how come it, if it is spread by the mosquito, I mean, these mosquitoes that can only go a few hundred yards, how come it spread it from Brazil or French um, Polynesia to, um, you know, all these various countries that, are, that have, you know, we have, they have recorded the virus. Mm-hmm. So, that, so I am not convinced that it is spread unless, you know, I get some. Do you put uh, any credibility in the in 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 in, in what is offered that uh, it's spread from person to person, and that is the 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 reason it has been able to uh, you know go beyond borders and that sort of thing? Um, y- yes, I I accept that it um, it could be it could be spread by a mosquito, it, you know, it bites an infected person, bites mm-hmm. another one, and so on. My query and my concern is that. That will not explain the sudden explosion right. in all these many countries. Well, listeners who just joined us this morning, we're talking about the Zika virus. My guest is Dr. Noel Kalicharan, and he is looking at other factors that may be um, contributors or directly responsible, directly or indirectly responsible, for Zika, saying that Zika in itself um, does not necessitate it being a low-impact virus, does not necessitate the worldwide alert that has been there. I want to stay in the area, if you forgive me, doctor, um, of genetically engineered mosquitoes, because that is something that has been whispered in different uh, corners, but never put Mm -hmm. uh, to the forefront. You uh, put it to the forefront. Explain, please. Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier about um, the Rockefeller Foundation patenting the virus. Yes. So that's that's a fact. That's not in dispute. That's um, in a public record in uh, in 1947. Mm -hmm. Um, It's also 
and this again, most people don't know this, the Zika virus is for sale. You can buy Zika virus hmm? on the Internet. Really? Yes, from a company called ATCC. And ATCC is one of the most reputable co- companies for selling um, biological organisms and you know, things of that nature. Wow. And there's a, you, I can even give you the price. It's $516 for it. Okay. <laughs> so combine the fact that it was patented, that um, it's available for sale. So let's say you and I wanted to, to make up a story or, or, or you know, try to hide something. We can buy these viruses. Uh, we can load it up on some GE mosquitoes and let them loose in the area that we want it to spread. Biological warfare of a gorilla type. In, in, well, in, in a way, but to me that is, you know, uh, I, I've, I've just read uh, peripherally about the GE, genetically engineered mosquitoes, mm-hmm. you know, but I've read enough to know, for, well, the facts are that, uh, you know, many millions of these mosquitoes have been released in Brazil. Um, now, the idea was to fight dengue. But the irony is that <laughs> dengue actually increased after, you know, after the release of these mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it defeated, you know, we don't it, it know, defeated we don't the know purpose. what the motivation is. We just, you know, are seeing some of the results. One of the things when we, when we, when, when we challenge <coughs> uh, things that have been passed to us, uh, uh-huh. folks say, for instance, or oh, who, the World Health Organization is the organization, but they have not had a very um, clear record with these alerts, have they? No. And in fact, um, because you know, in, in previous years we, we've had we've run this road before with um, you know swine flu and um, what was the one after that the HPV vaccines and mm-hmm. so on, and you know grossly over inflated figures were given yes. to us almost as if to create a, a, a panic or a demand for something, and most speculate well you know it's about selling vaccines. And vaccines that um, are not necessarily safe or effective. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, in fact, let me digress a little bit from this Zika story, because I think what I have to say here would be relevant in that. And this is breaking news I'm talking about here. Yes, Doc. Um, let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. Yes. <clears throat> now this is. On January 14, 2016, can I read a bit of yes, it? Yes, yes, of course. Please yeah. go ahead. <clears throat> on January 20, 14, 2016, Dr. Sinhang Lee sent an open letter of complaint to the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Margaret Chan, charging members of GACVS. Now, GACVS is the WHO's um, Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> charging members of the G- GACVS, the CDC, the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, and others with manipulation of data mm-hmm. and suppression of science in order to maintain the illusion of a- HPV vaccine safety mm-hmm. in the face of valid contradictory evidence. Okay? That is germane <clears throat> because, again, it gets to the point yes. of when, when folks think that beyond reproach is an organization like the World Health Organization, this, in fact, creates, creates some sunlight inside of that, of that armor of invincibility. Yes. Now, to continue a bit. Now, in other words, all right, anybody could complain about anything, but let's see the basis for the complaints. Mm-hmm. According to Dr. Lee's letter, and it's actually a 16-page document that is available if you know where to look, but I have a copy if anybody would, you know, like a copy. If you would like a copy, I can send it to you. Then you know I would, yes. Yes. <clears throat> so according to Dr. Lee's letter, a series of emails recently un- uncovered by a freedom of information request. You know mm-hmm. how these things work. Mm-hmm. Um, Things are hidden up in, in documents, and, and they, unless somebody asks for the information, the information remains hidden. 